Today, Jason, our engineer, is actually finishing up his massive BMW project. So let's go check in with him and uh, see how it's going. So how's the project looking? Yeah, our data's looking really good. Um, we just got it off the dyno, finished up our testing. The complete system itself looks really good. We're gaining like 10 to 20 horsepower and uh, 10 to 20 torque. And it's also over the entire run. So that's really good stuff. So what exactly went into the development and how did you get to here? Uh, we did a lot of different components for this project and a lot of different testing as well. So basically what we did was we tested each part individually. So we made sure everything worked by itself really well. We threw them all on there and then we got our, our power figures. So we were really concerned with how all these parts work together and how much power we could extract out of this car. One of the first things we did uh, for our product development was work on the intercooler. So the intercooler sits right up here on the top of your engine bay. And what the intercooler does is it takes the hot air from your turbos, cools it down and puts it into your throttle body. It's a little different than your typical front mount intercooler systems where they just use air and air. This uses coolant. You have cold coolant and hot coolant here. And you have your hot air that comes in here, cold air that comes out here. In between, the hot air it exchanges its heat with the coolant and it comes out the other side. Once we had an understanding on how this core worked, we went over to our flow bench, put it on there, and we were able to see a 16% increase in flow. That's gonna help out with throttle response as well as provide more power and torque to your engine. So armed with our knowledge on the flow bench on how the stock core will perform, we went through and developed our own core for this particular one. Did the fabrication in-house, we welded on end tanks. We usually test two or three different cores to determine which one's gonna work the best for our, uh, for our application. The internal geometry is a design that we created. So it's some really slick stuff going on inside. And that's what helped us to achieve that 16% increase in flow. All right, so next on our list after the intercooler are the intercooler pipes. Uh, these were a really tricky little project to make. Let's go over to the car real quick because I want to show a couple of areas where we really had to consider how this design was going to work. So the intercooler pipes are right here and they mount down near turbos, which are down there. The intake sits right here. The space between here is really tight. So the intercooler pipes come close to the engine cover, the side of the engine, the intake, and the firewall. Space is really at a premium here, so we couldn't have any room for air. We went through and got our laser scanner. Laser scanned the areas that we were concerned with fitment. 3D printed out these intercooler pipes, threw them on the car, and cleared really, really nice. We put them on the flow bench, made sure that they performed just as well as stock. CNC aluminum housings on the bottom are really nice for you know, making sure accuracy is great on that O-ring. And because the final products can be made out of aluminum, it's gonna be a lot stronger than the plastic ones that tend to break a lot. The next thing we did was our heat exchanger that lives right up front here. And its sole purpose is to help cool the intercooler up top here. So the coolant that goes through the heat exchanger helps to make sure that the coolant going into that is nice and cool. So we did a couple of really neat things with this one. The stock heat exchanger is probably about this big and it's a lot thinner than this one. So we made this one longer and thicker, but in doing so, we blocked the DCT cooler which lives behind this. So what we did here is pretty trick. We ended up making the fin height taller and the fin pitch, which is the space between each one of the fins, looser on this lower section. What this is designed to do is allow more air through here and help cool the DCT cooler while also helping to cool this. When we tested this on the car, we saw 10 degrees better cooling performance. So basically it kept this system on the car 10 degrees cooler. This is gonna help make sure that those intercooler air temperatures are a lot colder as well. You might notice that there's this nice stone guard in front of it. At one point in time, BMW decided that they wanted to add a stone guard to the F80 platform. We decided to develop this one as well to help kind of protect it from any sort of road debris from puncturing a tube and creating leaks. The rock guard itself, you can take it off with this installed in the vehicle. So you don't have to take off the whole front bumper and everything else. You just take off a few little components underneath and you can drop the whole thing right on out. While we were developing all these other suites of products, another engineer here in our Delaware office developed the oil cooler for this system. This particular one functions by having hot oil coming in one side, cold oil coming out the other side, and in between, you're using outside air that goes through these fins to take the heat out of the oil 
put it into the outside air so that way you can get the cold oil going back into your engine. If your oil gets too hot, it starts to lose a lot of what makes it work. And if you lose that, you can potentially damage your engine. To make sure that the oil cooler performed well with the rest of the oiling and cooling system on the BMW, we plumbed it with pressure sensors on the inlet and outlet. What this allowed us to do was check the pressure drop across the core. That way that we knew that it would perform well with the rest of the packages. Now, the oil cooler, it lives in a pretty nasty place. So we made it out of bar and plate, which is really strong when compared to the stock tube and fin oil coolers. Now, the reason why we decided to go with bar and plate is because on the car, the oil cooler lives down here and it mounts you know, horizontally. So if you're driving around a track um, and you happen to hit some road debris, you don't want to take out your entire oiling system. A bar and plate oil cooler is going to help resist that impact and help maintain the oil inside your engine. And the very last system that we developed is the catch can. So what the catch can does is it takes vapors that are coming out of your engine. As your pistons go up and down, they create a positive pressure inside the engine block. The catch can does is it taps into a line that's already on your engine, which takes those you know, vapors and vents them up to an area of lower pressure, usually in the intake somewhere. What this does is it captures the oil that's in those vapors. If the oil that's going through that system gets on the back end of your valves, it can create more carbon deposits than are already there and cause rough idling issues and even a loss of horsepower. So we decided to put it right here. A really nice CNC bracket here with Torx bolts that hold it down so it kind of matches the motif of the rest of the engine. We have oil and fuel resistant lines that attach to the stock system. There's a heater block down there that goes on the intake. We reuse that. Basically just simply tapping into an already existing system and making it a little bit better. In the end, we have a pretty cool suite of products here, but how did we get to this situation and why did we choose ones we chose? And the reason is they all work together as a system. You have your intercooler pipes here, which takes hot air from your turbos, and puts them into your intercooler. Your intercooler then cools down that air and puts it into your engine. The heat exchanger, which lives up front here, it cools coolant, which cools the air coming from your turbos chargers and puts it into your engine. So with all of these things working together, realizing that this was the maximum area where we could increase the efficiency of this engine and also help to push out a little bit more power. And that's why we decided to go with these individual products.